We have five other trials, so we're here triplet therapies were superior to doublets, and these include carfilzomib, elotuzumab, um, panabinostat, and ixazomib, which gives us just a wide, they're all approved in first relapse essentially. How do we choose between these, Amrita? And now we've got daratumumab, it's, it's, a, it's a nice thing to have choice, but how do we make those choices? Let's, um, let's talk about carfilzomib to start with. Where does that fit in now, or does it? Well, I think the, the water's become more money now that Dara got an approval earlier in the course of therapy. And I mean, I think there's two situations. One, there's real world, real life, right? For example, in the community, it, it still is a challenge to give daratumumab mm. the, the, in terms of the infusion time. Um, and for patients, that's, that's a challenge. Mm. I mean, that will change as, for example, the subcutaneous mm. formulation we, you know, we hope to see more data on that. But having said that, otherwise, I mean, I, I think it's looking at the individualized patient comorbidities clearly is a big issue. And, and I, I think all of us will take patient preference strongly into account the type of relapse, obviously. Someone who has a more indolent relapse, I'd be more comfortable using exasimib in a combination versus someone who has a very aggressive relapse. Mm -hmm. Sager? Yeah, I mean, I think we've, um, uh, our, our, our dominant go-to for the average patient has become a DARA-based approach, typically with an imid. For us, carfilzomib, uh, we find partners actually probably better with panabinostat than many of the other drugs that we have, and so we tend to use it in that situation. Uh, I was at a meeting last night with some colleagues, too, who are sticking with carfilzomib and saving DARA a little bit um, because I think they're comfortable with that regimen, the carfilzomib lenalidomide. Uh, is everybody going to go to daratumumab um, first? I guess the question really, Paul, is is it one or the other or is it both? That's a great question. I mean, I think, you know, I, I, I'm going to say something which may maybe a bit sort of left field. We're, we've also been very pleased with the latuzumab, and I'm using that early relapse because I need to, you know, we need to keep things in reserve. The other thing is anecdotally, both Jacob and I have had patients in whom Dara has failed them, and we've gone on to ELO-based combinations and seen a response. Uh, again, anecdotal. Yes. But have you seen the Absolutely. same, Sergo? So I think the point is we need to be very clear, I think, to our, to our audience that we've got these choices, but it's not a zero-sum game. We need them all. Um, and I personally am getting much more comfortable with carfilzomib and POM combined. I use that as a yes. go-to after LEN failure. That's also our first mm -hmm. line. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Um, my only caution with adding carfilz uh, uh, POM to DARA is the CD38 issue because, of course, it's expressed on an activated endothelium. So we just need to be a little bit careful. We should be clear that's not really been studied very heavily it, in any right, studies. It, it, right. It's not it, approved. It, so. it, it, exactly. So I think just a little bit of caution because vascular toxicity is sort of a, a favorite interest of mine, but I mean, it's, it's, it's relevant. But having said that, um, I've certainly used um, three or four drug uh, combinations with carfilzomib, POM, DARA, off protocol, and you know, we've seen great responses. So I think it's, it's, it's very much a, a series of options that you can adapt to your patient. Saad, who are you using exazomib, Lendex, mm -hmm. in? So, or exazomib, uh, POM, Dex, for that matter? So, so patients um, who either have access issues, they're coming from, from a little ways, um, um, or, or patients who are uh, elderly, but you feel that, that they need an emid um, uh, PI-based combination to salvage them. Um, many times, these patients are not the florid relapse patients. Mm. So mm. Those, those are the situations where you can potentially use. use so the temp, all oral you think the tempo of relapses is, yes. is quite important mm. here yeah. as well? Yeah. And I think Amrita does have very nice data um, mm. as well on ICSA plus POM, was, as you brought yeah, up, just um, which is a, is a highly active regimen. I would, I would echo that, and that, that really is nice data, Amrita, and congratulations on it. And it also echoes Pete Voorhees' work in the Alliance, which yes. is very similar. Mm -hmm. I would make one last point, uh, 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 Keith, if I may, that we've also had great luck with the POM, Bortezomib, Dex, DARA platform. That's very well tolerated and very active. And we've done that off protocol, but in very high risk, aggressive patients in whom you've got to get a quick side of reduction. Sounds like we're using, a, all of us are using quite a lot of pomalidomide in these patients yep. because they've had lenalidomide before. Um, can you use pomalidomide in, in renal failure or what side effects do you worry about? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, structurally the imids are all sort of similar, um, but we know that um, in terms of their disposition, 
pomalidomide acts more like thalidomide than it does mm. lenalidomide. Yes. Right. So um, it can be used at full dose, uh, except in the context perhaps of dialysis, where you reduce to three milligrams, I think, in that situation. But in general, it's actually a very nice drug to give an advanced disease for just that reason. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts on pomalidomide, Amrita, using a lot of it? Yeah, I, I agree with Saga. We use a lot of it. I mean, I do think you, I, we see more myelosuppression than with lenalidomide, but I think it's an extremely active drug, and it really has become our go-to backbone to, with okay. everything else. Paul, you've uh, been involved quite heavily with panabinistat. Any thoughts on where that's fitting into today's uh, therapies? Well, again, we, we've uh, my, my, my colleague, Dr. Jacob Laubach, led an RVD um, pano study, and it's really interesting. We've actually seen quad refractory, penta refractory mm. patients benefit from it. Mm. Um, and so I, I'm, I'm a firm believer in, in Saga 2 in the HDAC platform, so are you, Keith. And I think we're real, we really do think there's activity from this class of drugs. And we found that panabinostat uh, combined with imids is well tolerated. Panabinostat combined with the proteasome inhibitor back, backbone is, is well tolerated. And of course, there are next generation HDACs that are showing great promise. And I you know if you want to mention, Paul, there's an abstract at this meeting suggesting that panobinostat can increase CD38 expression, Absolutely. which Absolutely. makes you very curious about panobinostat daratumumab. I, I agree. Very good. Any other thoughts on treating relapse disease anybody wants to bring up? Are you using, you think you're going to go to daratumumab at first relapse before? Yes. Exazomib or Kepo? Yeah, I mean, the, what the partner is may vary, but I think Dara is getting used increasingly in first relapse. Right.